Greetings, friends, and welcome to this week's edition of Hope Around the World. My name is Sharon Norton, and I'm co-director for Europe and Africa, along with Steve Weavey Johnson, who's also in this video. Um, and then we are joined today by the newly selected executive coordinators for Africa Intermennonite Mission, otherwise known as AIMM. We have John Fumana, who is from Democratic Republic of Congo, and Bruce Yoder, who's from the US, but has lived many, many years in West Africa and uh, is, is recently returned to North America. So John and Bruce are gonna be talking today a little bit about some of the history of AIMM and uh, some of the missiological insight that they have and where they think things might be going. So thank you both to John and Bruce for joining us today. John and Bruce, go ahead. Okay, well, we're um, delighted to be, to be here, to be there, to be with you all. Uh, we wanna present a bit of our vision uh, for the future of Africa Intermennonite Mission uh, of AIMM, as, as Sharon said. Uh, our vision for the future of AIMM really uh, flows from three areas of concern. Uh, number one is our understanding of the church's missionary mandate. Uh, number two is the history, the history that AIMM has. And number three is the situation in which we find ourselves in, in this, the third decade uh, of the 21st century. Uh, to start with the biblical story, uh, in the biblical story, we see the missionary task that Jesus embodied and that he has entrusted to us. And this provides us with a model, a uh, missionary model of discipleship, uh, we believe, for our own times and our own places. Uh, but secondly, the successes and challenge of AIMM uh, that AIMM has experienced over its long history of, of more than a century now, uh, fill us on the one hand with immense gratitude, but on the other hand, also motivate us to greater trust and, and dependence on God. Uh, today, the resilience of Christian communities that we encounter uh, in Africa and all over the world fill us with great hope, uh, but uh, a world that sometimes refuses to acknowledge God's sovereignty uh, and in which there are often divisions and injustice, uh, this leaves us determined to carry out uh, the missionary mandate. So we'll be sharing uh, from these three areas of concern. I want to start with a bit of a biblical and theological framework uh, this morning, and then John will continue talking a bit about uh, the historical framework and, and where we see ourselves going. So biblically and, biblically and theologically, uh, our vision for the future of AIMM is framed by our understanding of God's mission in the world and human participation in that mission. Uh, I think it was the Apostle John who uh, presents Jesus' uh, post-resurrection encounter with his disciples in chapter 20 of his gospel. And there, as you know, he entrusted his ministry to them. He said, as the Father sent me, so I send you. And so the idea of sending is key uh, for us as we think about the theory and the practice of mission. In the New Testament, for example, Jesus uh, sent his disciples into the world, instructing them to preach, uh, to heal, uh, to share the gospel, uh, to deliver people from, from sin. Uh, for example, in Luke chapters 9 and 10, that's quite evident. Uh, also, the church uh, sent Paul and Barnabas, the church of Antioch sent Paul and Barnabas, in the Acts of the Apostles to share the gospel. And in the first centuries and as the third, fourth, fifth centuries, theologians, those who thought about uh, Christianity and, and faith, have explained the relationship between the, the persons of the Trinity uh, by suggesting that the Father sent the Son, uh, and the Father or the Father and the Son, according to your tradition, sent the Holy Spirit. And so the words mission and missionary come from the Latin words that mean send and, and to be sent. God sent Jesus. Jesus sends us to continue the ministry that he started. And so for us to, to, to send and to be sent necessarily implies a movement beyond the community, beyond the community of faith in which we find ourselves. And this means crossing borders, crossing boundaries, be they boundaries of faith uh, borders of culture, of geography, of race, of ethnicity, uh, of social economic level, all kinds of boundaries. Uh, so for us, mission is crossing boundaries or crossing borders in order to continue the ministry that Jesus started. 
uh, God chose Abraham and his family in order to extend God's blessing beyond the circle of Abraham's family to all the nations of the world. That's what we see in, in the beginning of Genesis, in Genesis chapter 12. The Apostle John, then later in the biblical story, towards the end of the biblical story, gives us a vision, provides a vision of the fulfillment of God's intention in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, for example, verses 9 and 10. And there we have this vision of people from around the world, people from all the nations of the world who gather together side by side uh, before the throne, uh, worshiping a God, worshiping God together. Uh, so there's kind of this missionary thread or missionary vision uh, that spans the biblical story uh, that links these two passages, this passage in Genesis of Abraham and the passage that John envisions in, in Revelation. For example, the prophets, already the prophets in the Old Testament, envisioned that other nations would come to Zion to worship God. Um, Isaiah has that vision. In the New Testament, the Syrophoenician woman uh, insisted that Jesus minister to her and her daughter. Uh, even when Jesus had first resisted because he thought he came uh, just for the, for the Jews. In, in Acts of the Apostles, uh, starting in chapters 10 at least and, and through chapter 15 and beyond, uh, the non-Jews are now included uh, among the believers. So there's this ever-widening circle of people uh, of all sorts who are touched by the gospel. And we believe that one day we will be together the people of all cultures, people of all races, uh, people of all ethnicities, different languages of all different kinds of social or economic levels or persuasions, and we will be before the throne worshiping God together. And so it's with that vision, uh, with that vision of, of Revelation chapter 7 before us, uh, that we respond to Jesus' invitation uh, to cross those boundaries, to cross those borders in order to continue the ministry uh, that Jesus started and to move towards the realization of John's vision in Revelation 7, verses 9 to 10. So that's a bit of the biblical and theological uh, background. Of course, as, as being, AIMM is part of the, the Anabaptist tradition, and so we are shaped also by biblical and theological uh, Anabaptist values. Uh, if you remember in the 16th century, the, the Protestant reformers, one of the things they did was to highlight uh, divine initiative when they had their understanding, their theological understanding of sin. Uh, they proposed that it was God who saved humans. Uh, it was God. It wasn't the church. It wasn't the works that people did, uh, but it was God that provided salvation. And the Anabaptists, they agreed, but they didn't set aside human responsibility, which was important. If it was God who saved, uh, it was human, the human being or humans who accepted or rejected God's offer of salvation. And in accepting this salvation, discipleship for Anabaptists became a necessary response. Uh, following Jesus became an indispensable response uh, for those who responded positively uh, to God's offer of salvation. In their understanding, in other words, of divine initiative and human re responsibility, they affirmed both of those. Uh, as, as members of the Anabaptist tradition today, uh, as Mennonites and as others, we have a similar understanding of the mission of God or of the Missio Dei. Uh, it is God who saves. It is God who stimulates the church. It's God who stimulates church growth. God who brings peace. God who makes reconciliation and social justice possible. God who accomplishes God's will on earth. As disciples of Jesus, what do we do? We worship, we pray, we fast, um, we participate in other activities uh, that uh, recognize that uh, God's sovereignty. Uh, but with that, along with that, we also participate in the mission of God. Uh, we participate in other activities uh, that are an indis indispensable part of being a disciple of Jesus. With, with our missionary initiatives, for example, we participate in God's mission to save others. We participate in God's mission to stimulate the church, uh, to stimulate church growth, uh, to make peace, uh, to make reconciliation and social justice possible, and to accomplish God's will on earth. Uh, in doing so, we also, just as the Anabaptists did, we also, we seek a balance between divine and human initiative. Uh, we seek a balance. We want to recognize both our missionary responsibility and the sovereignty of God. And so that's how we see ourselves fitting in uh, to the Anabaptist tradition. 
Uh, I'll hand it over to John now, and John's going to talk a bit about history and where we see ourselves going uh, as AIMM, as people in ministry together, people in mission together. Thank you very much, Bruce, for making that introduction. I'm going to say a few words about uh, the history, then talk about the current realities and context. Uh, beginning in the last years of the 19th century, Mennonite churches from North America started mission work in Africa in order to evangelize the people of the continent. These mission engagement resulted in both charitable work and new Mennonite churches in several countries in Africa, among which we have Tanzania, Kenya, Angola, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Zimbabwe, Zambia, the Republic of Benin, Burkina Faso, among others. Part of that movement, IMA as an intermentonite uh, Anabaptist group composed of individuals, groups, and churches dedicated the collaboration and mission. Several decades, for several decades, I mean, North American churches and other mission agencies provided resources for the work that they started in Africa. This assistance supported initiatives of evangelization, education, health and development programs. And from that, people received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Schools, hospitals were built, local leaders for the church and the educational institutions were trained and several other social projects were started to contribute to the well-being of those people touched by the gospel. These mission engagements resulted in a new African Mennonite Anabaptist churches, also intercultural relationship between African, North American and European collaborators, and also transnational Anabaptist networks. It is important to note that the churches in North America were primary funders of uh, mission efforts. African churches continued to receive a uh, for decades, but demographically, African churches have grown significantly. However, the same progress has not been made in the area of financial stability. And this is partly due to the fact that the populations and the churches in Africa developed the habit of depending on foreign charity that was the fruit of North American and European Christians who responded to the gospel or to, to the call of Christ to make disciples of all nations and to support social projects. By social projects, we're talking about faith and works, faith that goes with works. This is a challenge that is still felt today. And it is due to the fact that many African churches are not yet able to exercise their missionary role due to insufficient financial resources. North American missionary assistance has resulted in the mindset of dependency on foreign aid which has repercussions even in the area of economic development and even politically. That is the situation right now in Africa. Uh, when you look at the churches in Africa, uh, like all the countries, people are dependent on foreign aid and the people mostly believe that they have nothing and they need help. And this was not done because they wanted, like the, the missionaries and the mission agencies didn't do that because they wanted to continually supporting the church, but they were doing it because of the compassion and love that they had. And this was somehow responding to the call that Jesus made. But it has created a situation of dependency, the mindset of dependency on outside aid. Mm -hmm. 